Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Becca. This is Cosplay Books, the channel where I talk about books and then cosplay from the ones that I like the most. And today we are doing my January reading wrap up. <laughs> So I actually had a really good month in January. I the, the end of 2023 was kind of like a really bad reading slump. I was only reading like a couple books a month um, up until like December when I read like nine. And now I'm getting back into the groove of things and reading a lot and it's making me very happy. So, um, so we're just gonna get through our statistics first. I have my little pie charts that I wrote. I love my little, I love this format that I've been doing lately in my bullet journal. I'm gonna do a bullet journal video the end of February into March because I love my March spreads. I've already done them and I love them so much. So I'm gonna be doing a video at the end of February showing off like the end of this one and then the start of my new one that has all my March stuff in it. But I'm gonna wait because I do wanna do, you know, my March stuff into it, so. Um, I'll do that at the end of February. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off topic. So I had a really good reading month this month. Um, so let's just get into it. So I read 11 books in January. Um, I read 3,596 pages, one audiobook, one ebook, and I DNF'd zero books this month. I was reading such good books that I DNF'd and I didn't DNF any of them. And I participated in three different readathons, uh, which were Bookimon, which is a year-long readathon, uh, TBRathon hosted by Leandra over at Leandra the TBR Zero, and Adventureathon hosted by K Beth Bookish. Um, and Bookimon is hosted by Reading with Merv. I almost forgot to say that. So those are the re readathons that I participated in this month. They were super fun. So the average star rating that I had was a 4.41, which was really good. But I don't think I've ever had a month that has been lower than like a four. I read really good books, apparently. Either that or I just don't read books that, I, like I DNF books that I know I'm not gonna like. <laughs> one of the two. Um, but I had one three and a half star read, three four star reads, four four and a half star reads, and three five star reads. So my highest genre was fantasy with four books. Then um, I read two mangas, two horrors, two sci-fis, and one romance. And then uh, the format, because I have a little format thing now. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this. Anyway, um, I read five books that were off of my physical TBR, four books that I got from the library, one audiobook, and one ebook, like I said. Um, yeah, so let's get into the books by rating. I'm going to start with the lowest and go up to the highest like I normally do. So the first one is the three and a half star read. This was The Vow by Jodi Hedlund. Uh, excuse me if I'm saying that wrong. This was a book that I I basically just found this um, and it was under, under 100 pages and I needed that for a bookimon prompt so I used it for that. Um, this is like a I can't really remember. It's about a girl who is like arranged to marry this like duke question mark. I don't remember what he is. But she's arranged to marriage ma to marry him. And then this like sickness outbreak happens in her like kingdom. And she is sent away. And then she ends up finding out that her parents have died from this sickness, like later on. And that she has to be like the queen or whatever. I don't really remember exactly. Um, it was okay. Um, I know that it's a prequel to like an actual series that I don't think I'm ever gonna read. Uh, I just needed like a page, a book under 100 pages. Anyway, so I don't think I'm actually gonna continue on with this series. I just don't. I liked it. It was okay. Um, it was interesting, but not something that I'm really into. I'm not really into that like, I guess it's more like a Regency era. Because I don't really think she was like a princess. I think she was more like a duchess or something. She was something. She was a noble person. I don't know. I can't remember. I read this at the beginning of the month and I don't remember it. So, but it was okay. Not a perfect book, but it was a book that exists and I read it. So, 
The next book is a four stars. This was Fazbear's Frights uh, Blackbird. This was another one that I read just for a bookiemon prompt. I wouldn't have read it otherwise. Um, but this is a collection of short stories that it takes place in the world of the game Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, I enjoyed it enough. Um, I gave it four stars because I feel like short stories are so like a collection of short stories is really hard for me because like I did not really like the first one. I loved the second one and I felt like mid about the third one. Um, but the first one is about these two guys. It is uh, the first one is uh, the title is Blackbird. Uh, it's about these two guys who are in this like filming school together. Um, and they are filming this like short movie um, about a blackbird that like haunts people who are guilty um, and gets them to like confess their guilt or like confront it. And then one of the guys goes missing and the other one is getting followed by this blackbird with the guilt tripping. <laughs> it's a guilt trip, essentially. I didn't really enjoy it. I thought it was the, the it was kind of weird. The plot was a little strange. I mean, to be fair, what plot in this series isn't strange, but I don't know. It just felt strange and the ending didn't feel like conclusive enough. It was just kind of like, oh, everything's okay now. And I was like, but, but why was, but who, but what was the blackbird? Cause you guys made that up. So why is it, why is it, why was it following you? Did it actually exist? I'm really confused. <laughs> so I ended up giving that, I think like more of a four stars to a three and a half. Um, but the second story really brought it in this. The second story is called The Real Jake. It is about this boy who is struggling with like a terminal illness and his father is away in like the military. And so he's being taken care of by this nurse or nanny kind of person. And he, every night he gets visited by a little voice from his closet. And I know it sounds creepy. He says it's his imaginary friend, but it's just like a voice and it's like, hey, what'd you do today? And it, it um, constantly makes him talk about things that he imagines he does instead of like, oh, I sat in bed and then I threw up. <laughs> it's more like, oh, I went to the arcade. And he's sort of like, imagining things he would have done if he was not sick and it's sort of like a thing to keep his mind off of it and we find out that it's actually his dad uh voicing this like little doll that's in the closet and so when he like is able to stand up and walk over to the closet and open the doors he'll find this little doll that has these little like markings of like all the adventures that they talk about together and I think it's really, it's really sweet and wholesome, which doesn't happen in this series a lot. And I really enjoyed it. The, the third one was Hide and Seek. It was about this boy who was trying to like beat his brother at these uh, arcade games. And he ends up breaking one and then getting followed by the entity in it. It made a little bit of sense, but not much. Um, but... All around, I gave the whole thing five, four stars. I thought it was enjoyable for what it was, and yeah, I've been talking about this one for too long. The next four star read was There's No Way I Die First by Lisa Springer. This is a like sort of YA slasher um, about this girl who is really into horror movies, and she like is obsessed with them, and she has this like a uh, club almost. Um, that she invites over for a watch party and they're like you know she's like oh if i was in a horror movie i'd name i i would not be the one, first one to die in fact i'd be the like the final girl and these like she is challenged with this um when the clown that she hired to play like a scary game of hide and seek for this watch party um ends up killing her classmates and so she her and the other ones have to sort of run around the house trying to fight, figure out a way out or figure out a way to call for help while this like clown is chasing and killing them. As someone who does not like clowns, 
I hate this. See, here's the thing. Is I have not liked clowns for like forever. Um, and now as of recently, I've been starting to get more into like clowns and jesters. I think their aesthetic is cool. But I hated this. I actually was terrified. Um, I'm not really a horror girly, as you know. I don't really read a lot of horror. Um, so maybe that's why I didn't, <laughs> I thought it was kind of scary because I don't read enough of it to know that there's more out there in the genre. Or this could be a really good book, one of the two. But I did think it was kind of strange in like a good way. There's one specific scene, I'm not gonna spoil it, but there's one scene that was like, what the crap? What, why? Why was that put in? And it's nothing like bad or anything. It's just really, really strange. Anyway, um, I enjoyed it. And the last book that I rated four stars was Midnight Neverwood by M.A. Kuznir. Excuse me if I'm saying that wrong, I don't know. Um, this is like a Nutcracker retelling about a girl who is a ballerina and her family isn't really like okay with her doing ballet for that long. She's like, they're like, oh, it's just, it's a hobby and she'll get over it and she won't be able to do it. She has to get married because she's like a very rich person. Um, but she ends up um, like getting transported into this magical world called Everwood and having to find a way out. And it has a cute little romance in it and I thought it was okay. It was just sort of like one of those like, oh, some points it's really good and then other points I'm like, okay, whatever. But I did like it. I did enjoy it. Um, I thought the ending was pretty well done. And yeah, I don't really have much else to talk about it. <laughs> the next book I rated four and a half stars, which was One for My Enemy by Olive E. Blake. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in modern day Manhattan, but with witches. And I thought that was such an interesting plot. And I also annotate, or I tabbed it, I didn't really annotate it. But I enjoyed this book a lot. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, and I'm a sucker for a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Uh, you know me. Well, if you know me, you know me. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the plot was interesting. And I like the multiple like POVs between like the four different main characters. It got a little confusing at times, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. So I want to read more from Olivia Blake because I really liked her writing style. Next with a four and a half stars was Assistant to the Villain. Um, everyone hates this book, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I do have an entire vlog where I read this book. I will link down in the description um, because obviously I talk about it more there, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was funny and I don't have much else to talk about. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I don't know why everyone hates on it. I mean, to each their own, but I enjoyed it, so. Anyway, uh, like I said, I have a vlog about it, so I will t I will link that down, down in the description below because I don't want to be redundant and talk about it the same thing I talked about in that one. The ending of that book, well, though, whoa. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, the next book that I rated four and a half stars was Spy Family Volume 2. I love Spy Family. I think it's so cute. Um, I don't have much to talk about because I can't really remember what exactly happened in this one. But I think it, I just love this entire series. I think it's so adorable. And I am very much enjoying the relationship. I read Volume 3 recently in, um, like, in Fe it was like the first thing I read in February beautiful gorgeous i loved it it was adorable anyway we're not going to talk about that <laughs> the next book that i rated four and a half stars was beta by mt zimmy i also have another vlog uh dedicated to this book which i will also link down in the description this is another book that i ended up having and i really enjoyed this one um this book was compared to renegades which i love renegades in case you wanted to know um i did kind of get those vibes. I didn't like it as much, but I did really enjoy it. I thought it was interesting and I definitely want to continue on with the series. Um, and the ending, my job is on the floor. Uh, you, you, you'll see in the, in the vlog if you watch, if you watch the vlog, which again, I'll link down in the description. But yeah, I enjoyed it. And next onto the three five-star reads. The first one was Fruits Basket Volume 3. Um, I really liked this one. 
Um, I don't really know what else to say about it because I don't really remember it because again I read it in like the beginning of the month and I don't have it physically with me but I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm pretty sure this one it was mainly about oh what's his name? Kyo which I love him so obviously my heart you know I love him so the next five star reads was If I Have to Be Haunted by Miranda Sun. I loved this book. This book is about a girl with this power to see ghosts. And so she ends up, she has this like school enemy or like rival um, and they get paired together for a project. And she's like, okay, so meet me in this like tree house that I have back in my house um, or like behind in the forest behind my house. And he's like, whatever. And so he, when he goes, he ends up actually getting bit by a snake and dying. And so now she has to help him because she's the only one that can see him. And it's like a special snake that like if you, if you find the antidote within a certain amount of time after the person is bit, they can come back to life. And so that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out how to get the antidote and they have to go through all these like challenges or like these little like obstacles. And it's so cute because there's so many times where he like he obviously they they think they hate each other but he's like he keeps saving her and protecting her it's so cute i love this book so much anyway enough ranting about it <laughs> and the last book that i read in february i actually just finished it or january i actually just finished it uh the last day yesterday uh, I finished it on the 31st, was Cress by Marissa Meyer. This is definitely my favorite in the Lunar Chronicles, Lunar Chronicle series so far. Um, I'm a sucker for Rapunzel telling, so obviously. And also Cress and Thorn are so cute. <laughs> I love, I love Thorn. He's probably one of my favorites because he's like this funny, he acts very egotistical and it's, but like in a funny way. Because, like, I don't like egotistical characters that often. But I think he was just so, so funny. I enjoyed it. A lot. And I thought some certain points were very cute. And the ending, ugh, the ending was adorable. Like, the last chapter. Adorable. Loved it. Anyway. Yeah, I rated this five stars. Right, and the last little extra statistic that I have is my favorite, which I would have to say is If I Have to Be Haunted by Miranda Sun. I just adored that book so much. Um, I don't know what the longest and shortest books are because I thought I wrote it down, but I guess I didn't. I'm pretty sure the longest book is Beta by Empty Zimmy because this is 588 pages. And I think I want to say the shortest is probably Blackbird. It's either it's either one of these. I'm pretty sure it's Blackbird. It's this one. Um, this one has 232 pages. That's not counting like any of the manga. I want to make sure that it's actually the, I'm pretty sure this one has like 300 pages. So no, it doesn't, but it's still slightly more. Okay, so the longest book was Beta and the shortest book was Blackbird, the two Bs. Um, but yeah, so that is my January reading wrap up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below what your favorite read in January was, and make sure to hit that subscribe button while you're down there, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!